Summer break is in full swing. The midseason reviews are in and changes are abound here at Into the Chicane. This is Into the Chicane, a Formula One podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Channing Apodaca. Across the screen is the co-host, Brandon Wood. Yo, how Before, you feeling? I'm feeling good. Before we get started, as always, though, guys, please, please, please remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcast, we should be on there. It goes a long way. It helps us out, and it want, it inspires us to keep this bullshit going. Um, I'm doing good. Have you been enjoying the uh, the time off from racing? Uh, it's it's been all right. You know, I uh, in anticipation of this, I have been going back and like watching some highlights from the season just to kind of refresh my memory and. And, uh, you know, make sure I still feel the same way uh, yeah. I was feeling. So I watched a little bit of, uh, I think I did like the first 10 minutes or so of the race in 30 from Spa. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it ended the same way this time around. But yeah, just to keep my, just to keep my toes wet. And then I watched a little bit of the Music City Grand Prix and in IndyCar. Oh, how was that? I saw a little bit of the qualifying, but I didn't. Uh, I just got a little race. bit of the highlights. It was good. It's a, it's a, another one of those street tracks. Like I didn't know that IndyCar raced so many straight up street tracks, and they don't really seem to want to pave the roads, so they're like really <laughs> bumpy, which is cool. It look they always look you know, it looks like a good fun race, like from a yeah. driver standpoint and uh, from a fan standpoint, it looks really exciting. So I got to get more into IndyCar. But other than that, I saw you did a little bit of a live race watch. You streamed on our YouTube. Yeah, just kind of testing some things out there. Watched uh, Spa 99. Uh, that was pretty fun, seeing the classic Schumacher uh, uh, running into the back of, who was it? Um, was it Hakkinen, Barrichello? I think, yeah, Hakkinen. Yeah, it was Hakkinen, yeah. One of those guys. Yeah, and, it was the one where... Uh, Whoever it ended up being with, if it was hacking and he like, he slows down like just before hitting yeah. a puddle and Schumacher just guns it, I yeah. would, you know, just, just doesn't let off, I guess, goes straight into the back of him, loses his right front and then stays on three wheels till he gets to the pit. <laughs> yeah. Drives all the way back to the pit and then jumps out of the car and goes and tries to confront uh, Mika yeah. about it. Tries to fight him. What's crazy though, we were what like I was doing, I was watching along with you. That was the era where they had uh, reserve cars. Yeah, and I don't know if whoever his teammate was at the time had maybe already used that because everybody was DNFing in that race, but he didn't get in the reserve car. He just got out and tried to scrap right away. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think there was only six cars that are seven maybe that were still on track at the end of the race. That's insane. Actually, watching, finished. Yeah, watching that shit. There's no way they would have continued that race today. No way. That would yeah, have been, been red flagged by yeah. then. Yeah, they would have ended it before it even started. Um, and then uh, I was thinking something else, like comparatively, all you had to do in that race was get it home, just finish, just finish. And guys were still just sending it. Such a completely different area, era, not area. Yeah, uh, different it was, time. Yeah, pretty it's, wild. It's a, it's a trip. It's a trip to see you. I'm definitely going to do more of those uh, as we're kind of setting up for some other stuff uh we got going on for later in the year uh for live events so just stay tuned for that absolutely day, so that was one of the things that i was talking about big changes here at into the chicane for anybody who's listening anybody who cares we're going to be hopefully doing some more fun stuff over the summer break and with some of the shit going on out here in la we're throwing together some fun stuff and then uh big big changes either middle of the season or beginning of the season next year right yeah, potentially, big, but big, big changes. We'll see about that, though. Um, but let's get we'll into uh, some of the summer break shit. What do you got? Yeah, so I figured it would be uh, kind of fun to go through and just give everybody uh, a nice letter grade for how they're doing so far this year. Oh yeah, let's get um, judgy. We spent, we're twelve races in of twenty four, although technically we're. There was one race that didn't happen, so we're a little bit past halfway. But uh, regardless, uh, I think it's a good a good point. So I mean, scheduling I think, wise, we're at the halfway point, but numbers wise, just because one didn't happen, we're not there. I guess what 
Yeah, we, we passed up. We passed it up. <laughs> it happened. It, it came and went. Came yeah. and went. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe we should just start uh, from the bottom of the totem pole and yeah. just kind of go through. So uh, Alphatari sitting in last place right now in Constructors uh, standings. Uh, we saw uh, them start off the season with uh, <sighs> rookie Nick DeVries, who didn't quite make it to the summer break. Uh, he got but, he uh, got suspended. And he got sent to another school. During, yeah, but one of my one of my favorite uh, drivers on the grid currently, Yuki Sonoda, has been having a breakout year. Um, really putting in some great finishes. Although only has three points to show for it, it's not you know not that flashy of a result. But uh-huh. considering where that car is at, I think he's done really great. Um, I think as a team. For grade, for a grade, I I was I'm kind of I'm kind of leaning on somewhere around a D, maybe C minus if we want to get be general. I'm feeling I'm feeling D pretty heavy for Alphatari as a team right now. My uh, my gut instinct is to go with F. F. I, okay. I would say this is a failing year, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go D minus. Okay. Because Yuki Sonoda did have a good start. I'm not as high on Yuki's entire season as you have been because I think that Daniel Ricciardo coming back and out-qualifying him and then uh, out-racing him in Spa. Uh-huh. Or he, or he out-qualified him uh, in the sprint, right? And then out-raced him. Just in Austria. One of them. Yuki finished, yeah, higher, the- Yuki finished higher in Spa, right? Yeah. But either way, you keep, yeah. Daniel Ricciardo being able to come back and be at least on par with him is not a good sign for Yuki. I don't think that, I mean, with all the conspiracies that I've been putting together with the the litmus test of uh, Daniel Ricciardo going there, I, I don't think that Yuki's had as good of a season as some people have given him, and he's been hiding behind that tractor. But overall, team-wise, an absolute D-. minus. Uh, terrible decision. Not terrible. Not a great decision. To get rid of Nick DeVries, they've put together a bullshit turd of a car. Haven't brought a single upgrade package to it, and now are resorting to saying that next year we're just going to take the RB19, and that's just going to be ours. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, dumpster fire, the only saving grace was has been the start of Yuki Tsunoda's season and the two points that he's been able to get. Or is it one three. point? Three. Three. Hallelujah. But, uh, yeah. So if you had to give Yuki a letter grade, what would it be? C plus. C plus. Yeah. Okay. I think he's I, driven I was the wheels say off the car and B. some he's driven. I was gonna say a B, but Okay, a little I feel bit. Like, I feel like we can negotiate to, to a B. Mm. I can give Yuki a B. Okay. How about a B minus? Okay, let's do that. B minus. D minus for Alphatari, B minus for Yuki. How about Nick? Uh, Since he didn't quite make it out, I feel like he's got to get an F. That's a it's a failing grade. Uh, I mean, a D is a failing. I mean, grade what did they used to give us? School, but. Yeah, what did they give us in school when it wasn't even a grade? Was it like an a, NA? Uh, like it was uh, an NA or? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he deserves at least a letter. I think. It's got to be an F. All right. Um, uh, even if it's harsh, so, you did get yourself sent away midseason. You didn't score a single point. I don't know how many times he even made it out of Q2, but he it's a fail. It's a failure. So, I mean, so there was twice in the, uh, I guess, 11 races that he did that he outperformed Yuki and outqualified him. So, um. You know, wasn't a complete complete failure, but just by the nature of the beast, I think he gets an F. So, um, yeah. Daniel Ricardo only had two races under his belt so far, but where would you? And his best grade finish him? has been thirteenth. Outqualified his teammate once. Uh, he's C plus. Okay, I'm good with that. There's not really a whole lot to go on. I don't want to go. So I, for me, it's just he's right in the middle of the road. I think he's right about where he should be. 
So yeah. and C plus is uh, slightly above average. So yeah, uh, I, th- I think that's good for him. Right. So moving along, Alpha Romeo uh, kind of had a little bit higher hopes for them coming into this season. Same started off the first couple races looking pretty, you know, like they were looking pretty racy up there. Yeah, first. looking a little racy. Had a couple good uh, qualifying sessions, but then uh, just have been sliding downhill ever since then. So yeah, I think right now Alfa Romeo uh, also uh, they're I think they're in there with a with a D as well. Wow, not a, not a D minus, but like a D solid D, maybe D plus. I don't think I would go that low because they did look good in the beginning of the season. They have slid down, so I got. I got to account for the beginning of the season. I got to account for Zhou Guan Yu. I would go C plus because at the beginning of the season, I'd say that they probably were at like, and, and this is comparative, right? To who they were the season, a season prior, what mm-hmm. their expectation is, and then where they are now for all teams. So B plus would have been my start of the season. They've slid down. I think, can we land on a C yeah, C minus maybe. You have him at a D minus, or like a D. All things considered, so you account for both drivers. C a C minus is too low for me. It's got to be a C. See, I kind of rate the drivers on a separate scale than the team, right? Like the, okay. the drivers can only work with what the team gives them. So I, I feel like that kind of plays a factor, like. Just the team and how the performance of the car hasn't been that great, and I think that that's hurt both of the drivers this season. So that's kind of why I rate them a little bit lower than maybe uh, where you're at. I can feel you on that. All right, C minus. I can I can get on with the C minus. Okay, cool. So C minus, and then so uh, Joe. I would go. Uh, let's see. I would. So go- so far this year, um, he. Valtteri's outperformed him in both races and in qualifying. Um, That's so shocking uh, to me. Uh, Joe's actually got one more point uh, than Valtteri. So he um, has outraced. He's or no, no, of, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Val, Valtteri's got one more point. He's got five points. Joe's got four. Wow, that's shocking. Because I, I have not even noticed Valtteri Bottas this season other than his social appearances at the Australian Grand Prix. Just kind of being <laughs> like the man of the hour, you know? And then in Miami, yeah. being a little lit up too. Getting yeah, raised over the there. Yeah, resident Aussie. So, personally, I think Joe hasn't had a great season. I mean, he's been fine. But I, th- I, th- I think he really hasn't gotten comfortable in the car. I'd say he's... I, he gets about a C right now. Hasn't really shown me anything to that he's outperformed the car. Yeah. So I feel like the C is pretty right, solid for him. I'm happy with a C for him. Okay. Uh, Botas. I would go D plus for Valtteri Botas. I know he's out. Well, he's wow, outperformed okay. his teammate, but he is supposed to be doing so, and to barely be doing that against a guy in his sophomore season. Um, he's a what nine time Grand Prix winner, if not more. He's got he's up there in the upper echelon of most Q three appearances in F one history, top of the charts in pole positions, all of that shit. Despite the fact that he's driving a piece of shit, I think he should at least be outperforming his teammate on a substantial level, and he's barely doing that. I've said it before this season. I think he's really phoning it in and and just kind of he's a data guy now. He's just uh he's just there for analytics. He's not really Yeah. I I he doesn't seem like he's there to race. So uh D D plus for me for Val. And you hate to see uh, it. It's a shame. It's an end of an era. Yeah. I I'm willing to give him a little bit more credit. Uh I was going to say maybe like a C minus, but um then why don't we settle on, on D plus? Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. Brutal. Brutal. Moving, just saying it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, but he's, he's, he seems happy, so that's fine. Uh, Haas. Um, I, I don't even know where to start. Haas. It's crazy uh, because they could ha- they've had a, a, 
like a couple A, A minus races, a couple like D plus, maybe some Fs, some D N Fs. Yeah, they're real hit or miss. Uh, the the problem that they have, I think. The, the makes it hard to make this assessment is because they've done so well in qualifying mm-hmm. so many times, especially Nico. And so but then in the races. Exactly. So it's like, how do you really, do you, they even get credit for the good qualifying positions? Right. But I mean, they did have I, a couple races know. where like they looked good. Their best finish was a seventh place. And I don't even know who that was. I don't know if that was Kev or. I think that was Nico. So. Nico's but best yeah, it was Nico's five, best finish to the seventh. Five total DNFs as a team. Sounds about yeah. Is it five as a team? Uh we have here that it oh, I wait. think this is four. Four as a team. Okay. Yeah. Still not good. And a lot of that can probably be contributed to the Ferrari power unit, which they yeah. gotta they gotta stray away from that. I hope they got a deal in the in the works with somebody else because I think as a team at moments, they've looked good. They've looked good this season. B plus range, A minus. I would say overall, I, I would say B minus on the season. You're being awfully generous. It I is think. generous. I, I'm a little bit of a homer when it comes to Haas, but it's like it's a potential outlook type thing that you know that there's something there. You know that they have something going, and they're just missing it. But that's been the the same story for the past five six years. I know. So it's it, like it has been, but now the same old... there's a little bit more hope, and they've kind of put it into action too, with some of their qualifying and and just lack of some... race. Perf- yeah, there's something there, but it's just the lack of race performance, and then honestly, one driver who kind of isn't pulling his weight. Yeah. So I'd say so, I how about C plus? Uh where are, I mean C? what how about C? I I'm a solid C I think is is that just means everybody's falling in the C range. That's I mean you know, there's still okay. a lot more to go, but I I feel what I mean, what were you going to grade them? C minus probably at best. Then why don't so, we go C plus if I'm if I was in the B range, and I remember this is comparative to their previous years, so this yeah, is Haas. I think for compared Haas. to last year, it's not much of an improvement. So I feel like it's still kind of the same problems that have been lingering. So the that's why I don't want to give them too much credit, but they do have a lot of the same problems. But you can see the that they've gone up in like they've got a better car. They've put together a better package. It can't race as well, but it does have more top-end speed, one-lap qualifying speed. So they've mm-hmm. made an improvement there, at least. So I think you got to give them credit for that. Sure, and they've been consistently doing that. So, yeah, sure. Okay. And let's C- remember, C+. this is one of our few, the few independent operations. So they're not financially backed the same way that True. everybody yeah. else is. That's that's a good point, too. So, okay. Uh, C+. Plus. I think that's that's fair, yeah? Yeah. Cool. K-Mag. Uh I think just straight off the bat, he gets a D. D. Market. Kind of phoning it in. Uh, Nico, I'd say... B. B, B, B plus. I was going to so. say B plus. So let's go B plus. Nico's knocked it out of the fucking park this year. You can tell that yeah. every issue he's had has been team and car related. I think... 100%. I think he's... You know, we've been having this argument. He He could be in the conversation to get a Red Bull seat or a top team seat. Why not? Like he he's shown that he's still got it, and that he wants it. K Mag, he's him and Valtteri, I think, have summer plans. Like they've got, you know, as soon as the season wraps, they're gonna meet up somewhere and start their own podcast or a band or some bullshit because their heads are in the fucking clouds. Hey, I'd subscribe to that. I'd listen, hundred percent. Uh, Williams. Ooh, this one's sexy. I'm gonna go. I like Williams at around a B. They're sitting seventh in constructors t- championship right now. Mm-hmm. It's pretty solid. Uh, the the teams, uh, you know, it's really Alex. Hard. It's really hard not to grade based on everything that we know that's coming or that we feel that's coming. And and I, you know, we're doing this to grade the season so far, what they've done. 
but it's hard yes. for me not to be biased and be like, but I know there's some more in there. I know it's coming, yeah. but we, the I got ceilings gotta, definitely higher than where, where yeah. they've reached so far. It's uh, I got to try not to grade with recency bias. So I'm comfortable with B, B minus. Okay. I'd say B is pretty, pretty uh, fair. Okay. Cool. with Logan that. Sargent. Rookie. Uh, no points to show so far. His best finish is 12th. Um, he's been outperformed uh, both in qualifying in the race every single time. I'm going to go D+. Almost, let me see. I think once maybe he's... Uh, oh, no. Twice he's outperformed Alex in the race when Alex DNF'd. So. D+. Plus. That's D+. Plus. Okay. Where yeah, I wasn't expecting him? much from him, honestly, this year. And, uh, you know, I, I, he's not quite failing grade yet, but... But since we didn't expect a whole lot from him, does that rank him higher? Or, should, you know, should we put him at a C? No, no. I don't think that that changes the grading. I just, this is kind of where I maybe expected him to be, I okay, think. Fair. I don't I don't think we should be uh, grading on a curve or anything. Right. So No individual curves. No. Alex Albon. Um, a minus. Just A minus. I, I, I'll go there, too. He's yeah. uh, outperformed the car many, many a time. Uh, some excellent battles uh, where he's ended up finishing. He's uh, won in the race. Oh. He's won battles in a Williams, yes. a car that we're so used to over the last five or so years, seeing lose every single battle that it's yeah. ever gotten in, and he's winning them. He's getting in the points. He's been close to a podium. One, two, or three things go right in the race, and Alex is on the podium. You know. Yes, single-handedly rebuilding that brand. Uh, uh-huh, and he's stepped up his defense. His defensive game in Canada was camera time like a motherfucker. Uh, I think in Spa he was getting a lot of camera time too. Alex Albon, again, no recency bias, doesn't affect his grade, but he's on the up and up, and I think in a few years he may be one of the faces of Formula 1. Definitely on his way. A minus. A minus. Uh, Renault, Alp, Alpine. Ooh. Uh, we're, <laughs> God. But I don't know, man. It's team wise, uh, it's hard to get think of anything but an F. F? I mean, that's D? you're saying they've they've done worse than Alphatari. For who they are, I mean, you got to grade on a scale on a, on a curve a little bit. Okay. Um. They fired yeah, I mean, they they fired their team principal mid season on a moment's notice. Both of yeah. their drivers are not doing well. They had massive team penalties in the first few races back to back to back. We're talking about 15, 20 second penalties just caused by the team. Their okay. power unit doesn't seem to be shit. They should be battling for the second place spot. It should be a four way fight. For second, and they should be in it, and they're not. Esteban yeah, Ocon too- is out driving Pierre. I just, how about what do you set? What's your what would you grade him? I was gonna say about on par with Alphatari, but you know you're kind of selling me on uh, that F grade just because of uh, all the chaos that's been going on. I think uh, that F would. Uh, Get partially credited to uh, the former CEO uh, of, of Rossi. Well, I forget his last name. Laurent Rossi, the guy, the yeah. guy that basically helped create all this current chaos. The guy that was in charge. Yeah, of, and the, and you had the guy your... that was in charge of negotiating uh, uh, Alonso and Piastri's contracts. Yeah, and you have that guy <laughs> flaming the team. It seems like I mean yeah. they're a dumpster fire. They're a dumpster fire over there. Doesn't seem like either of their drivers are happy. Not only that, but it's now it's getting into public eye. Did you see what happened with uh, they did one of those like uh, F1 behind the scenes fun games that they released on their YouTube video where oh, they, they had or on their YouTube video on their YouTube channel where they had drivers going A to Z and naming a race winner whose name starts mm. with that. And when it got yeah. to O, multiple drivers refused, though they knew to say Esteban Ocon, they wouldn't even say his name. Yeah. So you've got. A team in shambles, a CEO who's throwing the team under the bus, a team principal who is fired midseason, and one of your drivers is the most hated driver on the grid. 
who, though he's doing well, I think he's having a good season, solid performances a couple of times, is the most hated guy on the grid. They crashed into each other in Austria or in Australia. Not as high as they should be. I think this is an F for Alpine. And that's yeah, uh, that's graded on a that's graded on a curve. All right. <laughs> yes, they're doing better than Alpha Romeo, Alpha Tauri, but for Alpine, they should be battling for the two three spot. Yeah, uh, seven DNFs between huh. the two Frenchmen for this year, so not looking good. Uh, Pierre Gasly, how would you how would you rate his year so far? C minus. Okay, and then uh, is the same for Esteban, maybe or. Because they both have, Esteban's got. About I'd go B minus for 13, Esteban. Esteban. Esteban's got thirty five points. Pierre's got twenty two. Because Esteban had his uh, his third place in Monaco, which was pretty as the, yeah, their best so. finish of the year. At Gasly had a great performance in the sprint. And let's not forget, he put in a Austria. worldie. He put in a worldie of a qualifying lap in Monaco. Yeah, so that's so, got to factor in. Okay, so uh, we said so C. Would you say a C minus? So this is. For, I would actually go higher than that. I'll say a C plus a C, for C, Pierre, and then a B minus for Esteban, or a C plus. I as would well. go B for Esteban actually. B. Okay. And this is where that whole team versus driver comes into play because team F, but the drivers, though they have issues, they can save themselves. They are still performing. They might not yeah. be liked. Or they might not be performing to their potential on this brand new team, but they're still doing better than the team itself. There we go. That's Alpine in a nutshell. Love it. Uh, McLaren. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Coming in at sitting now at fifth place uh, with 103 points in the constructors okay. standings. So here is where we have to keep recency bias out of the equation and just grade them on the season so far. Start of the season, easily a D minus. D plus D area, right? Even though we knew yeah. that they were going to be about there, they're still McLaren. They still have two of the top young drivers on the grid, and they're doing dog shit up until the last two, three races of the year. Split the halfway mark. Yeah, like the last three, three or four races. Yeah, and then you've got Lando Norris still saying that they got massive issues, despite the fact that they did bring this great upgrade package, and they're worried about yeah. whether or not. So on the whole, okay, we go. Let's start them off at uh, D. D plus, and then things get a little bit better, a lot better. Can we land on B minus? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's fair. With the considering, uh, uh, it wasn't just like the 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 recent uh, improvement mm -hmm. of results isn't hasn't just been like one race. It's been the past three, so it seems like. This new performance is kind of here to say. Uh, so I, th I think I think it's real. I think uh, B minus is a fair. B minus. Uh, yeah. Lando Norris. Lando Norris. Um, he's had a couple of shaky races. A little bit of a rough go. I think. Uh, Obviously, at these past couple of races, I think his confidence is back, so he's on the upper upwards trajectory. But I think, I think he could, he could have done better uh, a little some points earlier on in the season. So I'm willing to give him a, a solid B minus, just like the team. So okay, I was gonna go a little lower than that because the start oh, of his okay. season was so low. Okay. And he was so bad, and even in the moments, you know, these past few races where they had a better car with more pace, he mm -hmm. did tend to get stuck in the back of the pack and struggled to make his way up. I don't remember if it was uh, Austria or Spa, but he just wasn't even on par with Oscar at certain points. But that could have just been strategy-wise. I was going to go closer to a C, so you go B-. minus. How about C+. plus? Well, just to counter that, you know, in looking in comparison of him to Oscar, mm -hmm. he's got tw over twice as many points as Oscar. True. He's uh he's outperformed him in the race 9 times. Uh he's outqualified him 10 times. Uh and he has no DNFs. So, 
All right. Compared to Oscars too. So I feel like you sold me. You sold me. You sold me. Because I'm about to riz Oscar Piastri up, and yeah. Lando Norris is my boy, so it doesn't take a whole lot to fucking sell me on boosting him. So I'll go B minus. Okay. You want to go B minus? That's I can get there. That's, okay, cool. Oscar. I would say B plus. I, I I'm right there with you. Even though he hasn't outperformed his teammate, he shouldn't be. But he has performed as the easy rookie of the year. Yeah, and but here's the thing too. In these in a couple big moments, he's outperformed Lando. He has. Right? He absolutely so, has. I think he gets a whole lot of credit for that. Uh, he he's he got been his able first to... podium. He led an F1 race for the first time this year. He took 100%. it to Max, lost out, but still. He's gotten in uh, some shaky moments, like with Carlos. Uh, he kept his head cool, did the media thing right, let Carlos say some dumb things, and I think he's just he's looked like the future face of that team. Yeah, he's kept his cool the entire time. Yeah. Uh, he looks like he fits into the grid really well. He so. went he went sneaky undercover when they were doing bad, and that was like okay, that makes sense. That's a bad team, and he's a rookie. He's not going to be doing anything outlandish. But when he needed to, and mm-hmm. when it came time to, he he showed why McLaren spent buku bucks to go out and get him. So, B plus Oscar Piastri, good on you, Mike. Okay, sitting in fourth in the constructors' standings, Ferrari. Olive, I gotta go C. Wow, that's. I feel like that's. A lot more generous than I was anticipating. Really, you going for I was yeah. gonna I go mean, lower. They've been showing improve. They've been showing improvements mm-hmm. the past couple races, but overall, uh, you know, not that great. Uh, it, it's been pretty evenly matched between uh, uh, Carlos and uh, Chuck in the races. Qualifying, Charles has outperformed him, um, but they're both kind of on par with each other. I feel like definitely been having more of the, I guess it's gotten better with the strategy calls, but this year earlier on has been plagued with a lot of the same strategy issues that they had last year towards the end of the year that, that really, uh, yeah, it's really hurt them. So, but yeah, I mean, they're on par with about where I think comparatively to last year and the year before they should be. They haven't, well, actually, they've gotten worse. They've gotten worse. Or is it that other teams have gotten better and that the holes in their game are showing? Well, I think that they've maybe improved just a little bit, but that the other teams have gotten other teams so have much gotten better, better that they've can, surpassed yeah, them. I can agree yeah. on that. They They have patched a little bit of the holes, but they still have a bunch of issues. And you can tell that their drivers aren't happy there, and I think that's a factor. So, yeah. so you said C? I can go C plus. I was gonna say C minus, so C. Let's solid land on C. C, yeah. Middle um, of the road, so, which is honestly, when you think about it, that might as well be an F. Your your Ferrari. It should be B's are better. Yeah. All the Ferrari right fans the are yelling pony. right now at their st- that to quote, yelling right now at their phone. To quote D3, the Mighty Ducks, it's bees are better or you're riding the pine pony. Yeah, all the Ferrari fans are yelling at us right now saying it's it's an F. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, Charles Leclerc. Man. His best finish, second. He's got three podiums, two DNFs. Neither of the DNFs were his fault that I can think of. Did he put... Did he No. Did he put it into the wall at all? No, in qualifying he did, but a couple of times, but I'll go B minus for Chuck. Is that where you're gonna Car- land? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh what about Carlos? B. So a little bit better than uh than Chuck? I've been saying it. I think he is uh the past two years, I think he's been the better driver over there. Cool. All right. I, I agree. No, maybe not I the agree. past two years. Chuck, I mean, yeah. Chuck, did, Chuck had a better year last year, but the year before that, Carlos outdrove him. I think he's outdriving him this year. I don't know where they exactly are in the standings, 
I know they're not far off from each other, but consistency yeah, they're wise. Ch- and, Chuck's got the upper hand on him, but um Yeah, consistency and uh, you know, situationally, I think Carlos has just been better. Yeah, I mean, considering how much they've been favoring Charles throughout the season, for Carlos to be kind of on par with him points wise, I right. think is 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 big. So um kudos. Cool. So Aston Martin. Uh, oh, started Lord. off the year just completely on fire, has slipped back since Canada. Um, but then kind of come back a little bit more. Yeah, the, uh, in uh, in Belgium, they kind of had a little bit better of a finish than the past few races, but still not nearly uh, at the tier that they were at the beginning so of the year. I think we got to really kind of break this one down. So beginning of the year, I think the first handful or more of the season we would have probably said a a plus right yeah just comparatively and then after canada things start to fall off alonzo's still looking good lance stroll has had one good showing sort of since then but other than that he's fallen off really hard yeah the team as a whole it's not like they've fucked up they haven't really made mistakes no. Their pace has just lost. Yeah, and I think that a lot of that has to do with the other teams catching up. Correct. And they haven't brought their big upgrade package yet, though, right? Or did they? They did bring one in Canada that was supposed to be and pretty that's big. What, yeah, they looked... It didn't actually end up like being the opposite that direction. great for them. Yeah, so there is supposed to be more to come, so I'll be looking forward to that. But I think, personally, I would give them a B just for how this year as a total has gone. I Um, would go B plus. I think if we're going to give them an A plus to start the year, dropping down one whole letter grade and staying in third and just barely losing out to Mercedes, they're still in the hunt for that second place spot. That's a, that's a big, that's still a big leap. So B or B plus. Okay. B plus it, it is, I think. Lance Stroll, I personally haven't been that impressed. Also, no. at the same time, not expecting a whole lot. So I think he just gets run-of-the-mill C for this year. I'd give uh, him a C plus. Okay. Let's factor in his broken wrists for the first few races. Actually, you know what? I, I'm going to up mine. I'm going to go B minus. I think he did a lot of great things. I think he showed a lot of, uh, a lot of courage and... And what do you want to call it? Something stupid. Mental fortitude to do what he did in the beginning of the season. But he has fallen off, and he is being outdriven by his teammate and outdriven by the car. Like, he's not keeping up with what that car should be able to do. Yeah. So I'd go B-. minus. Okay. Uh, can we settle on a C plus? C plus. Okay. Uh, the Bull, Fernando Alonso. B- B plus. B. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. Had had a great year so far. A couple only a couple maybe moments where uh he just had a little bit of a mistake, but other than that, it's been pr- pretty solid. He's just been no, on fire. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go A minus. A minus, okay. I don't think we can we can talk about Fernando Alonso the way that we have all season and then not give him an A of, of some capacity. Yeah, especially just the vibes he had starting off the season. That was so much fun just following along. Yeah, it was great. So uh, A minus for Fernando. So moving on to Mercedes, uh, sitting second in the Constructors' Championship with 247 points. A B for Uh, me. B. Okay. I would have put them in the C range at the beginning of the year, but what they've done, the decision to get rid of the the side podless car moves them up. To make a, yeah. a rash decision like that, that is more points. And it works out. More points. Um, yeah, the team has been pretty silent. Total Wolf, on the, like, overall, has been pretty silent this year, I think. But they've just yeah, kind of I mean, slowly worked their way back into the equation. So I'd say, uh, yeah, B. Okay. I, I think that's pretty good. You know, they've definitely made improvements. Um, definitely wasn't expecting them to be second in the constructors 
standings at this point. So same. Good on them. Um, I think that B is well deserved. Uh, George Russell, well, on the other hand, F. F. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. George Russell. To be fair, I'd say B minus. B plus. Okay. Air, air, somewhere in the Bs, I can land. I don't know, man. That's pretty generous. I feel like he really hasn't shown much of anything the past half of the, well, I guess the past six races. He's got 99 points. He's tied with Leclerc. He's getting beat by his teammate a substantial amount, but I think he's been consistent, and I think he's been able to race back from bad position. That's kind of why I'm giving him that. He like He missed out on... Q2 even, I believe, in Spa. Didn't even make it into Q2 and was able to Mm -hmm. gain good position. So, like, his race pace is there. It's not where he thinks it is. It might not be where British fans think it is, but it's there. And the car's getting better. So, what would you give him? (sighs) C plus, B minus. B minus would be really generous, I think. So, if you want to do that, I'm, I'm with it. You know, we're going to, we're the George George Russell hater fan club. We're going to shit on him a lot more this season. So why don't we just do something nice for him right now and give him a B minus? Exactly. Okay. Don't say Lewis, we never did anything for you, Georgie. Lewis motherfucking Hamilton. The GOAT. I will give I, Lewis a B. A B? Yeah, B, B plus. B plus, I think, is where I'm at. I he's still there's maybe been like one moment where I I think he was like complaining and wanted to just quit the race, mm-hmm. <laughs> which which gets me, you know, pretty uh, annoyed when he does that. But other than that, I think he's shown some pretty great, uh, pretty great performances. His mentally, I think he's in a lot better place than he was last year, and it showed. And I think, to start in the his season driving. too, I don't started what? And to start the season too, I think he's in a better spot. Yeah. So, yeah, B. I think B plus. Okay, I can get a B plus for George or for Lewis. I'm sorry. I don't mean to, I'll, I'll never call you that again, Lewis. I'm sorry. I promise. I'm sorry. I promise. Uh, okay, last one. Red Bull. Okay, dokey. Uh, a plus. A, yeah. I mean, how, how can you? Just deny that it's you results. can't do anything but an A plus for Red Bull. Um, Max, does he get the A? A plus. Okay. What else are you gonna he do? He's he's done damn near the impossible. And yeah. Sergio Perez, what what do you think? This is this is probably one of the harder ones I think of the entire grid. Yeah. I think. He started out really great, mm-hmm. and I think if he's kept on that same trajectory, he'd have it B plus right now. But honestly, I think he's going to get a C from me. Oh man, that is low. I just that low of the what was it's, it six races in a row? I was I thought it was five. It could have been six where he doesn't even five. make it into Q three. That's a <clears throat> huge factor. But then from there, he races his way back to the podium. Almost each and every time, does he not? Not every time, but a good amount. Almost of Almost every but, time, he's been on the podium seven times this year. So he, ah, you know what? He missed out on the podium five times. That's what I'm saying. Yikes! He, sh- he shouldn't really be putting himself in that situation. So I think he definitely could have done better, and I think still has room for improvement for the rest of the year. So that's why. Okay. I say C. Well, grading on a curve. I think he's done worse than he should be. In that yeah. car, you should not be getting anything but second place. I'm going to go C minus. Holy shit. Oh. Wow, okay. That stings. I mean, this is just how much we care about uh Chica. This is tough we want love. Him to be doing better. Yeah. This is 100% tough love right here. Um Yeah, I mean, can is there an argument for his race craft that gets him out, you know, of his bad qualifying. Outside of those first couple, you know, the first handful of races, he, he's been nothing but a liability. Yeah, you know, like you say, like how much credit does he get for those 
drives where he's coming up through the grid. I, I don't know, but the reality is that uh, there it's it's more than about yeah. the race, right? It's like, more than you about also the have finishing to do a good, and... good qualifying in order to get yourself a better position. So, and then comparatively I, I think... to your teammate, he's been out qualified by his teammate and beat by his teammate ten times this season. Yeah. So, and yes, your teammate is uh, the phenom, potentially the future goat, but you gotta be right there with him. Yeah. If 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 he's outperforming you every time in qualifying, you at least have to be second in points for finishes in the race but that hasn't happened so yeah gripping the steering wheel too tight check ho yeah. c c yeah. minus yeah i'm gonna so, go just below uh, average i think this is not a good hasn't been a great season for check c minus yeah so and now look hmm. a lot of these grades are all over the place not every single one of them is going to be perfect not every single one of them is going to be as sharp of a grade i think that's a sharp grade that's an honest to truth comparative to where they should be grade of where that driver's at. Not everybody got the same treatment, but because of tough love, we give that to Checo. See my it's our podcast, so we do whatever we, we want. Do the fuck so. we want. We're in our forties. Uh, so no, we're not. Looking looking back to the beginning of the season, uh, we did a podcast did right we? before we did a podcast right before the season started. After testing, so uh, we made some predictions as to what the standings would be for the constructors. Uh, at the end of the year, but uh, we thought we would look at that and see how close we were so far. Um, do you remember at all who we had in 10th place? Uh, uh, yes. I'm looking at it now, so uh, I Oh, do okay, so yeah, you do. And this is a miss, and it's a happy Complete. miss. I think this is a good, I'm happy to miss on this one. We had Williams missing out and uh, continuing their run of... Uh, Bullshit. Uh, we had Williams finishing 10th. Yeah, um, and they're at 7th now. So Happy to report they're in 7th. That's awesome. They're tied with Haas with the same amount of points. So, um, you know, it could be, a you know, could change uh, at any moment. But uh, for them, I think that's awesome. That's great. Yeah. Uh, number 9, we had AlphaTauri. And this one, if I remember, this was a tough one to push back, but it was sort of like predicting where things were going to head. We, or at least me, I didn't want to put AlphaTauri that far back because I want AlphaTauri to be yeah. doing well. I like that team. I want them to be doing yeah. good. I like the underdog, the younger brother aspect of what that team is. And uh, But they were on a slide, and they've slid farther back than I think either one of us could have even imagined. Um, but we weren't far off, ninth. Yeah, but so a lot I, worse I, I for the player. Yeah, I wouldn't have suspected that they would only have three points at this point. Yeah, with, uh, with the backing that they've got, they should be doing a whole lot better. Yeah, um, it, and it could be more. Yuki's lost out on a couple of those, like really, uh, you know, really small margins. So you hate to see it, but it's you know you reap what you sow. Yeah. Uh, so. Moving on, so we had in eighth place Alpha Romeo, and currently sitting in ninth. Ninth, so uh, that's about, about where they're right at. There. I think they're yeah. at like they're at where we thought they would be, without mm -hmm. a little bit of the shuffling of the deck chairs of the team around them. Yeah, and only so, two points below Haas. So yeah, and then we had Haas at seven, which is. Right in there. They're currently, I guess you could say, they're tied for seventh uh, with Williams. But Hey, um, look at that prediction. It's pretty good. And then we had, it's in sixth, McLaren, who now they're actually in fifth with 103 points. Got a pretty nice gap uh, on sixth. So I think overall, compared to how they were uh, looking... But before the season, this is great, obviously. Yeah. And it's really only been, like we said, the last like three races, three, four races that they've shown improvement. So mm -hmm. that's where most of these points have, has come from. Exactly. So I'll take pride I, in, in our prediction for them get, being in sixth because we weren't able to predict the upgrade package that they were going to bring and, and how, how much of a boost that that was going to give them. So I think us predicting sixth, I'll take a win. That's all. I'll consider that a W. Yeah, uh, so we had, uh, in fifth, we had Alpine, which is kind of where I, I think that they wished they had been. Uh, they're currently sitting in sixth 
yeah. uh, right behind McLaren. Middle of the pack for them. Um, about yeah, yeah, same thing. That's yeah. we can consider that a W. Just about, you know, Alpine. Yeah. Is, Although their their self stated goal was to be fourth this year. So yeah, I mean it's not a W for them. I'm saying it's a W for our prediction. Saying you know oh, they're yeah, right yeah, about yeah, where yeah. we yeah. guess that they would be. I mean yes, the gap to McLaren is pretty wide. It's almost 100 points. But like we said. All those points came in the last few races. Not all of them. A lot of them came in the last few races. Um, but here's the thing. For the rest of the season, I could see them losing that sixth position. If Williams can just... If things keep going down for them, Williams is, what, 46 points down? Alex Albon goes on a tear. Logan Sargent gets some points. They eke out. It's just going to be close. Yeah. There's there's room Statistics there. Statistics say that they will finish the season in sixth, but I think there's a chance. And that's all we need. So for fifth place we had predicted Aston Martin. Fourth place we predicted Aston Martin. F- oh yeah, that's what I meant. Fourth place. So they're currently sitting in third with 196 points. Uh just barely above fourth. Um honestly th- we weren't really anticipating uh, how good they were going to be right off the gate. Yeah, so we knew they were going to be better. This is, this is awesome. We knew that they were going to be better. We knew that there was plans to put a lot of money into that team and that they were putting together a package. But we didn't give them enough credit. Um, yeah, and we were also kind of juggling. We weren't sure whether or not they were going to be slotted above the Mercedes in third or not. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think they ended up doing a lot better than we thought. So this is yeah, awesome. I would also say that we ended up getting like for where they're at now. So they're in third, a couple points out of fourth. We're lucky. We're lucky to be that close because they could easily be in second place right now. Had some, some things gone a little differently. Um, so that one, a little bit of a W, a little bit not. Cause I think they could be two places away from where we predicted them. Mercedes, same thing. Um, yeah. In a loose we predicted. Yeah. We predicted third and they're in a loose second a little bit yeah um so yeah basically the last one uh that was a a surprise for us uh we had predicted ferrari would be in second but currently they're only fourth place down in fourth and not looking like they are going to shuffle those deck chairs no they're only five points back yeah where i say like a loose second or a loose third is that you can envision a reality where those move places you know I I don't see yeah. Ferrari moving up to second at all this season. Yeah, I mean they they can maybe uh, get third. They can out, outperform Aston a little bit, but potentially you'd like to see them come from the summer break and have a new upgrade package and really make a fight for second because then we have a four way fight for the rest of the season. We've got Mercedes, Aston Martin, Ferrari, and McLaren vying for those points. And I don't I don't know. That's an up-in-the-air thing. We, uh, Ferrari is such a loose cannon. Who knows? But that, yeah. I, that's one anything, of our biggest... Anything could happen. Like, they could have a great race going, like, have great pace, and then, like, one bad pit stop ruins the entire thing for yeah. them. So. A surprise that we miss Williams by three spots, but not a huge surprise that we miss Ferrari. Because, yeah. like, every so. everybody with Ferrari, whether you're a fan or not, you go in thinking that it's going to be better than it is, and uh, you come out worse on the other end. Yeah, so... Well, is there anything else you want to touch on before we uh, call it for this week? Uh, No. We're going to get to uh, some writing and some scheduling, and then we're going to be back to you guys, uh, I don't know, a week or more, potentially. Maybe we'll do like a quick update on if or some news breaks, maybe a quick pit, just a short YouTube video that's off pod uh, on yeah. some news and notes from around F1. But other than that, we'll be back next time, hopefully with a purely entertainment-based pod for everybody yeah uh hope maybe one of these nights this week uh might pop on go live again just to watch some some classic races and uh, go. chat yeah. chat so if you so. want to watch some old races tune into that you want to get those youtube numbers up remember guys like subscribe this video uh subscribe to the youtube follow us on twitter tiktok instagram follow us on spotify check us out on apple music anywhere you get your pods it goes a lot longer of a way than you guys might think and we love and appreciate you for it i Peace. Peace. This has been Into the Chicane, the mid-season review. Bye. Bye.